family, my name is Brother Netanyahu Ben Yashua. My name is Brother Gedaliah Ben Yashua. Shalom. Shalom, family. We want to welcome you to Yashua Commonwealth Ministries, where we are a Bible teaching ministry, line upon line, precept upon precept. Before we get started with today's lesson, we're going to have an opening scripture by Akiya Gedaliah. That opening scripture will be read from Yeshua or Isaiah, chapter 28, verses 8 through 10. Verse 8 reads. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that no place is clean. To whom will he teach knowledge? To whom will he make to understand doctrine? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. May the reading of the word of Yahuwah have a blessing in Yahusha's name. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, family. Again, welcome, welcome. As always, we ask you to go get your Bibles, uh, because we want to read what we talk about uh what i want to address right quick is that um the best way to study with us since this video uh we get a lot of requests about writing scriptures down uh, what i would like to say is that please just watch the whole lesson first and then secondly you should go back and then you should extract the scriptures that we use and then thirdly go back over for a third time with the scripture so that you can get the further understanding. I know that in church, you know, they make us lazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. They don't, you, the preacher stand there, he holler and giggles and all that stuff, and we get one or two precepts, mm -hmm. and then we get the whole about what happened in the hood later. You know what I'm saying? Right. We don't want that. We, we want you to study this information. Because, like I said, I'm never trying to convert anybody, right. but I am here to help you understand some of the doctors in the world that we have been hearing that are kind of shady and not really giving you the total truth of the matter. It's important to understand the matter. So if you want to just watch and pause, get the scripture and then resume, that's, that's just as fine also. Mm -hmm. But study the content. I had to learn by studying the content. Mm -hmm. I heard the message and then I had to study the message with the precepts. So if you would, as always, you know, I'm asking, you know, hey, subscribe, hit that orange, orange circle, that's mm -hmm. our subscri subscription button, right. and then that way you can get access to all 70 so far of our, our video lessons. It's a lot of information, and I don't, I don't have, you know, a lot of time to stop, pause, and keep going because the information is so fast in such a small amount of time. So, you who have given us the opportunity with this, with this modern technology, you can just pause it, write it down, and keep going. That's awesome. Or watch it, come back, extract the vid, uh, the, the scriptures, and then go a third time. Mm -hmm. But understand the content of the message that I'm giving you. Because right now we're going to get ready, and we're going to teach you, bring your understanding up on the beast and the false prophet, right? So we did the mark of the beast. And again, the mark of the beast is basically, we see it every day. All the things that are contrary to the to Yahuwah, our creator, mm -hmm. belongs to the beast or, or to the dragon who is going to deal with the beast. We have a beastly system we're dealing with, and you're, you're consciously dealing with that information of the beast, mm -hmm. and you're giving it the right hand of fellowship. You agree to it, right? But right now, I just want you to understand that it's a lot of information in a short amount of time because, unfortunately, sometimes we have short retentions. We can't watch something too long before right. we get distracted. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is, you need to study the content. I'm asking you. If I'm going to be, you know, your, your, your helper in, in truth and scriptures, then I'm asking you to help me to help you further understand the message. Mm -hmm. So, hey, watch it. Then come back. Instruct the scriptures if you got to. And then watch it again with the precepts. And trust me, before you know it, your 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 seat of intelligence with your whole how can that screw up will will go up, That's you right. know? And you'll get these brownie points from the father through the son by the teachings, right? But hey, we ain't got a lot of time at all with because I want to try to keep the the lesson manageable. Right. right? So I mean I could do a whole hour, whole two hours, but it, it don't take that much to learn. So the beast and the false prophet, right? Let's start in Revelation chapter 19. Let's look at, after great tribulation, what well, we know, three and a half years, that the beast and the false prophet, that means that there's going to be a world leader and a world priest, right? Mm -hmm. 
on this side of the hemisphere where we are in, in the in the Americas, mm -hmm. you know, we, we look at the office, I'm saying, well, not we, but but people look at the office. It said. It said, okay, but it said that the, the papacy is the greatest office mm -hmm. of religion, right? And everybody looked to that as that. And then there's going to be some world leader who is going to convince enough nations to fall into cahoot with him to get you to start dealing with his his doctrine or his policies, basically, right? right? But he needs that false prophet to get you to believe that he's the right leader for you, which is going to be a beastly system mm -hmm. that he's going to torment everybody. But remember, they're not going, they're not going, just go and just conquer. They're going to conquer, but the false prophet is going to seduce you to freely take the mark, mm -hmm. accept the doctrine, right, and fellowship with it, basically. Mm -hmm. This is the whole purpose of, uh, of the, the, the beast and the false prophet who will get their authority from the dragon, mm -hmm. right? We know the dragon is God, Satan the devil, because scriptures tell us that, mm -hmm. right? So I ain't afraid to say that because I understand it, so I have to deal with it accordingly. But Revelation 19, verse 17, uh, when you get there, go ahead and start right there. <clears throat> verse 17, uh -huh. and I saw Malik standing in the sun, and he cried out, and he cried with a loud voice saying to the fowls that Fly in the midst of heaven. Uh -huh. Come and gather yourselves together to to the supper of the great father. So this is this is when great tribulation is about to end. And that is is at its last, you know, half year because mm -hmm. it's three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So the last six months at the very crunch time or the eleventh hour. Now the Mashiach is about to come back, but a great damage has been done, and now this Malik is calling all the ravenous birds. Where you can go to uh, what, uh, Leviticus eleven. And around 17 verse, it tells you all the birds you can't eat. There's these ravenous birds, right? 13 through 17. 13 through 17. Thank you, Akiya. So now, basically, we're looking at this end time event to where the nations and the world leaders and the governments are coming under attack of the heavenly host, as mm -hmm. they would call it, right? Go ahead. Verse 20. Uh huh. And the beast was captured. And with him, the false prophet who worked signs before him, uh -huh. with which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast uh -huh. and those who worshipped his likeness. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Wait a minute. How, how many of us I really understand that the, the beast, the, the man in charge of the, of, the, of the beastly government system and his religious false prophet mm -hmm. are going to be the first two people caught Translated because mm -hmm. you can't you can't get thrown like a fire without being translated, right? Mm -hmm. Get new chains, a new right, body. Right. So they're gonna they, they gonna get translated, thrown into a lake of fire with brimstone, as scriptures tell us, mm -hmm. and they're gonna be there for eternity, mm -hmm. waiting for the rest of the posse to follow them at the second judgment, right. right? Or the second resurrection, right? So he says that, uh, and I saw he said, and the beast and the, and the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs before him with which he deceived those who have received the mark of the beast, those who were in cahoots, those who were in agreement, mm -hmm. those who submitted themselves, those who just simply agreed to follow the policies of the beast mm -hmm. or this world this world leader. Right. right? Then it says, but these both were cast alive they didn't get killed. They were cast alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Where? Into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So brothers and sisters, here's an example of understanding that if you don't get your house in order, if you don't really recognize this beastly system as the mark of the beast, as you are agreeing in the seat of your intelligence to, to accept all these religious doctrines of blasphemy, and you give it the right hand of fellowship, mm -hmm. then you are going to be in trouble when the Mashiach's return to atone the world for its, its evil and its sin by the hands of men. Yeah. Right? Loving the doctrine of God worship. Right? Some of us don't understand it, but hey, I'm trying to help you understand if you don't understand. Flee God worship. Flee idolatry. I would rather die in the truth and the righteousness of Yahuwah then get caught up with the mark of the beast and his fellowship with the false prophet in order for me to burn forever. 
That's what's going to happen to these two guys. Mm -hmm. and we're going to see that a little bit later, right? But let's go to Jeconiah 14 chapter. Let's go to old Ezekiel, right? Jeconiah the 14 chapter. So we're talking about the, the beast and the false prophet, right? And it's important to understand that we have always dealt with a beastly system when it comes to religion. Right. Right? We've always dealt with a beastly system. Even our fathers in the land created or, or participated in a beastly worshiping system of what? God. God. Right? That's, that's the most damaging thing to your salvation right now is God worship. Whether you believe me or not, I ain't here to convert you, but I am here to help elevate you if you are under, trying to seek this truth. Mm -hmm. Right? So, Yechaziah, old Ezekiel 14, verse 1. Uh, let's see what Yahuwah says about the elders who are supposed to know better but won't do better. Right? Go ahead. Verse 1. Then certain of the elders of Yasharal came and sat before me. Uh -huh. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their gods, or Elohim in their hearts, or their minds and their thoughts, and have put their stumbling blocks of iniquity, their gods, or Elohims, before their faces. Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? So when you pray, this is the thing, right? We know that in Proverbs 28 and 9, and 9 it says that he who turns his ear away from the law, which is the law of Yahuwah, mm -hmm. even his, his word, even his prayer is an abomination. His prayers are abomination. So if you got a God set up in your mind, mm -hmm. you, know, and, and, you know, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, Krishna, whatever, your, your Cadillac, your house, you know, you whatever you make a God and mm -hmm. you worship it, mm -hmm. you would say, Shall I allow you to come ask me anything? <laughs> no, until I allow them to ask me anything. Mm -hmm. You 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 have taken the mark of the beast, mm -hmm. right? And you have fellowship with the false prophet. Come on, you I, I should have to answer anything to you. Mm -hmm. But what are you gonna say to the people? Go ahead. Verse four. Uh -huh. Therefore speak to them and say to them, uh -huh. This is what Father Yahuwah says. Any man of the house of Yashara who sets up his guides or Elohim in his heart, setting his stumbling block of iniquity before his face, and then come to the prophet, I, Yahuwah, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his guides. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I remember watching Minister Society, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the older brother Keenan, right? Mm -hmm. And he was a post, post mailman, right? <laughs> and they had, they had this thing where they made uh, an instant truth or. Uh, or Give him some knowledge, right? right. And he go, well, where'd he go? Uh-huh. <laughs> right, right. So, so, hey, you know what I'm saying? If, if the Bible teaches don't make a God, right. don't worship a God, right. then why are you worshiping a God the Bible says don't do it? Oh, because the people who gave us back our scriptures tainted it with God worship, mm -hmm. made everything God. So, if God said don't have a God or make a God, then God should be a hypocrite because God is a what? God. A God. <laughs> but the Creator said, it's His words, right. don't make a God. If you make a God, then you're going to accept the fellowship and the mark of the beast which belongs to the dragon, mm -hmm. which was in the garden in the beginning as the tree of the knowledge of righteousness and evil called Satan. Mm -hmm. So, ha uh ha -huh, right. right? So you will become... To follow his likeness. You become to follow his likeness, mm -hmm. right? So now he transcends all that evil, unrighteousness, unholiness mm -hmm. to what we know now is the beastly system, which is headed by a beastly person and a false prophet. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, yeah, continue. Verse 5. Go ahead. In order that I may seize the house of Yasharal and the thoughts of their own heart, because they are all estranged or turned aside from me. Through their gods or Elohim. So Yahuwah said, I'm going to lock you into your thoughts of God worship. Mm -hmm. So that when you die, you have the breath of life in your mm -hmm. nostril. Mm -hmm. And you have to come at judgment day. You're going to wake up knowing, man, I sealed myself with a God. Right. Oh, I am in trouble. Right. Yeah. So in the last days, it's just going to be a, a, a faster, higher level of perpetuation of God worship. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the formula, brothers and sisters for the, the, the false prophet and the beast, right? right? Working under the dragon, right? Who, who proclaims to be God, mm -hmm. right? He says it in Yeshaya or Isaiah 14, I will be like Yahuwah, mm -hmm. right? I will set my, have my throne above Yahuwah's throne. Mm -hmm. I will 
be above the, the, the holy mountains again. Right. All right, come on, y'all. Let's, let's read the content for true understanding. Mm -hmm. Let's make sense out of it. So like I say, if you got to watch the lesson and then go back and instruct the scriptures, then go back and watch it again, learn the message. Right. right? The beast is a false prophet. We, we're talking about how this system is just going to escalate in the last days, which is going to perpetuate what we think is the mark of the beast, mm -hmm. what the, they say is a chip in the hand and a step in the forehead. <laughs> no, it's a system, brothers and sisters. Right. It's a system. Where we at? Six. Go ahead. Therefore, say to the house of Yasharal, this is what Father Yahuwah said. Uh -huh. Repent. Repent. Right? Everybody needs to change from this system and go back to the covenants of Yahuwah. Right? Go ahead. Repent and turn from your gods or your Elohim. Uh -huh. Turn your faces away from all your abominations. God worship to the creator, Yahuwah, our father. It is an abomination. Mm -hmm. He says that I'm not going to give my praises to anybody. Right? So you got to figure out how you want to do this. Skip down to verse 12 and pick it up. Right? Verse 12. Go ahead. The word of Yahuwah came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the sins of the earth have reached their peak, their full measure, I will stretch out my hands against it. I will cut off the supply of bread, send famine upon it, and cut off man and beast from it. Uh -huh. Though these three men, Noah, Deniah, and Yo, were in it, they could deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says Father Yahuwah. Now, we all, most of us should know about Deniah, right, the prophet, Yo, the prophet, and who else is that? Noah. And, I and, Noah and, and Noah, right? Mm -hmm. Noah was a prophet also. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you say I'm holy, sanctified, or I'm holy, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, well, how would, all that cliche mm -hmm. stuff. If you were holy and just to your whore, you can't say nobody in this last days but who? Yourself. Yourself. So, hey, we want to say Big Mama. We want to say TT. We want to say Cousin Kirk. We want to save the dog and the cat, but we can't. Okay. Because everything is done on a self-individual basis where the false prophet and the beast, or the beast and the false prophet, want everybody to think that they're going to be saved together in one big pot. Mm -hmm. right? And that pot is boiling at a billion degrees. Mm -hmm. And when you realize what it is, it's going to be the lake of fire. And it's too late. And it's too late. Right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, he says that, even these three righteous men were in great tribulation, they couldn't say nobody but themselves. So you got to get yourself together, get your house in order, so that at least you can be able to survive the, the damage, the fire, and, and, and the, the issue dealing with God worship, because you want to flee, all right? Continue. Verse 15. Uh -huh. When I caused the evil, beastly governmental system to pass through the land. Wait a minute. The evil... Beastly governmental system. system, right? So the beast is in control in the last days in totality the beastly system of the beastly governmental system, mm -hmm. right? But he has to have a false prophet to smooth his hard edges, <laughs> right? Because right? he said, man, I don't want to, hey, well, Trump, oh, oh. He crazy. I don't want to listen to Trump. But yet you get the false prophet coming and say, hey, Trump is okay. Right. He's a child of God. You damn straight you're a child of God. Right? He's a devil worshiper. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't scared to say it. Hey, everyone that don't worship Yahuwah, don't understand Yahuwah, yeah, you got a Trump-like mindset also. You got a God. Whether it's your money, whether it was the White House, whether it was the Black House, mm -hmm. Black Street, whatever you got to call it. Brothers and sisters, we got to understand what Yahuwah is saying to us. It's critical. He said, hey, three of the most righteous men in the book, if they were in great tribulation and had to deal with the beast and the false prophet and their system, they can only save themselves with the knowledge of Yahuwah. All right, continue. Huh? Verse 15. Go ahead. <clears throat> when I caused the evil beastly governmental system to pass through the land and they desolated so that it is devastated that no man may pass through because of the evil beastly system. Uh -huh. Though these three men were in it, as surely as I live, says Father Yahuwah, they would deliver neither son nor daughters. They, they only will be delivered and the land will be desolated. Uh -huh. Or if I bring a sword upon the land and say... Wait a minute, what's the sword? Sword is war, mm -hmm. right? So if you bring war, which the beast is going to do eventually because mm -hmm. he want to go out and conquer, so he got to bring war on the land. Go ahead. Swore, go through the and say, swore, 
go through the land and so that I cut off man and beast from it. Uh -huh. Though these three men were in it, as surely as I live, says Father Yahuwah, they would deliver neither son nor daughter, but only they would be delivered. Only themselves, go ahead. But when I send a pestilence. Wait a minute, land, pestilence, right? So war and pestilence, right? I, I think in the Revelation they got the four, the, the, the message of four horses, mm -hmm. right? Death, pestilence, and, you know, famine, etc. right? So and the war. And the war. And Yahuwah is breaking it down to us through the prophet Yechaziah. Mm -hmm. Right? That we need to be able to see that somewhere along the future is going to happen. And this is the telltale elements of what's going on. So, Mashiach, tell us what's the sign of the end of the last day. Mm -hmm. There will be wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and etc. Right? Hey, it's right here. Do you believe the prophets? Can you hear the prophets? Or are you dealing with the beastly system, the, with the false prophet right now, and you're taking the mark of the beast, and you're dealing with his sign, and you're giving him the fellowship? Hey, be careful of the beast and the false prophet's mm -hmm. doctrine. Go ahead, let's, let's continue. Right. Verse 19. Go ahead. When I send a pestilence into that land, and pour out my fury upon it in blood, to cut off from it man and beast, uh -huh. though Noah, Deniah, and Yo were in it, as surely as I live, says Father Yahuwah, they will deliver neither son nor daughter. They will, be, they will but deliver their own lives by their righteousness. Go ahead. But this is what Father Yahuwah says. Yes, I have given warning in that I will send my four severe judgments upon Jerusalem. Oh, the four severe judgments are going to happen again in the last days. Even though Yahuwah is using the devil, the dragon, God, as a tool to afflict mankind for his sins and his unrighteousness, woe to those who offense comes from. Mm -hmm. So woe to God, woe to the beast, woe to the false prophet, woe to the people who have accepted his doctrine and fellowship it with the right hand of fellowship. Right? Finish that, huh? Well, this is what Father Yahuwah said. Uh -huh. Yes, I have given warning that I will send my four severe judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the evil beastly governmental system, and the pestilence to cut out man and beast from it. Hey, let's just pay attention to what is being said. So the four horsemen are spoken right here technically, mm -hmm. right? The four horsemen of destruction, the four horsemen of great tribulation, brothers and sisters. Let's go back to Revelation right quick, chapter 13, because we want to make sure you understand exactly what the, the beast and the false prophet is all about, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. So, you know, this is our prelude to uh, the mark of the beast, right? Because we got to give it to you in small doses, even though these doses are a lot of information, but right. we got to give it to you, right? So, hey, Revelation 13, pick it up at verse 1. Uh, let's read that right quick. Verse 1. Let's see what the beastly systems will rise up for. Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Wait a minute, what's the names of blasphemy? Anything that's outside the name of Yahuwah that you are worshiping. So all the names of gods are names of blasphemy to Yahuwah. He said those are an abomination to him who are worshiping gods. Mm -hmm. Right? So this beastly system here, this beastly kingdom is going to rise up out of the abyss. It's going to go forth with the beastly system and trick you with the miracles of a false prophet. Mm -hmm. But they're going to get theirs in the end for their trickery, right? But skip down, pick it up at verse what? Uh, four. four. Go ahead. And they worshiped the beast which gave power to the beast. They worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Uh -huh. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to make war for 42 moons. Wait a minute. So he going to bring the sword, right? And if, when you bring the sword, what happens? Usually you bring desolation, mm -hmm. death, pestilence, and all that stuff too, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, we look at the same thing that we just read by the prophet Yechazai, or old Ezekiel, as they call him, basically, mm -hmm. right? So there's this beast, this world leader, this, this, we even call him a king, a president, or a governor, whatever, but he's in control of the economy of the world for the most part, at least a big chunk of it, to where he got people coming to praise and worship him. Mm -hmm. Because the dragon says in Matthew 4 and in Luke 4, when he was tipped into Mashiach, he says that all these kings of the world, which was given to me to give to whom I want, I will give them to you if you do what? Bow down and worship me. Bow down and worship me. How many of you guys think you are praying to Yahuwah 
and think you're getting a blessing and it's actually coming from Satan because when you pray, you pray to who? God. Mm -hmm. So God is blessing you. Right? Come on, y'all. Help me out here. Continue. Uh, Verse 6. Uh -huh. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed me against your hoof. Wait a minute. Your hoof. Because he's going to blaspheme all things that are righteous. I would got his butt kicked out of eternity in the first place. In Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Right? Mm -hmm. God got kicked out. God was, before he sinned, was a, a priest of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Right? But he got beside himself, as Yechaziah says in chapter 28. Right? Sin was found in you, and now you're done, dude. Right. So now he's trying to recreate his own authority <laughs> that he had. Right? But continue. Finish that for me, please. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Yahuwah to blaspheme his name and his house and those who dwell in Shema. Uh -huh. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over all tribes and peoples and languages and nations. Uh -huh. And all who dwell upon the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. Hey, this is why I say subscribe to our channel, access our video listing, because we have a lesson called the book of life. You probably want to go check that out, right? But hey, even if Deniah, Job, and Noah was in these last days in great tribulation and this beastly government and system was set up with this beastly religious system even in full gear, they couldn't save themselves. Right. I mean, but they, they couldn't, couldn't save anyone else. Anyone else but themselves, mm -hmm. right? It's important to understand that. Let's go a little further, right? Let's go to the 17th chapter. So let's pick up in verse 1. Revelation, the 17th chapter, verse 1. Go ahead. Verse 1. Uh huh. And there came one of the seven Malachim who had the seven bowls and talked with me saying to me come I will show you the sentence of the great whore that sits upon many wars so who's the great whore the religious system God worshipping from the dragon Babylon hey the fall of Babylon Lucifer okay we got a lesson subscribe access the video listing go check it out brothers and sisters the fall of Babylon Lucifer right so hey Lucifer is God. Lucifer is the dragon, right? Continue. Verse 2. Uh huh. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Wait a minute. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, right? So the great horn that sits on many waters or the seas, the seas are the people, right? Who's infected with their religious doctrines of, the, uh, of God? The people are, right? So he says, with whom the kings, the, the leaders of the earth, uh, have committed fornication or practiced idolatry, God worshiping the worship of Elohim. Go ahead. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with her doctrine. Hey, at, uh, Fat Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, and then Lent. Lent. That's drunkenness, right? You die and fall off to heaven. That's drunkenness. There is no law, so I'm saved by grace to do all the sin in the earth. That's drunkenness, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. The Shabbat of Yahuwah have changed from the Friday night to Saturday, the biblical seven day, to the first day of the week. That's drunkenness. I can eat anything I want, just as long as I pray over it. That's drunkenness, mm -hmm. right? Hey, so the kings are in cahoots with the beastly system, with the beast with the dragon and tell the false prophet to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, just pray over because on this side of the planet or as Rome this way, he say he's the Holy Father. Right. He says that he is the vicarious Philly God. He's the replacement of your God here on earth. Mm -hmm. And if Jesus is your God, then he said, I replace Jesus so you bow down and kiss my ring. Mm -hmm. All right? So see how, see how fundamentally corrupt religion is? Mm -hmm. But ain't nobody paying attention. Continue on. Verse 3. Go ahead. So he carried me away in the spirit into the midst of God, worshippers, worshippers of Elohim. Uh -huh. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Uh huh. That that part, hold on, that cup is her doctrine. Huh? That's her doctrine. The wine. Mm -hmm. And she's passing along the nations. Right. She's giving it to the seas, right? And the kings of the earth are sipping it and passing it on to their people. Go ahead. 
verse 5. Uh -huh. And upon her head was a name written, uh -huh. Mystery Babylon the Great, uh -huh. the mother of the harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Wait a minute. So the dragon, which we also refer to Satan as of her, mm -hmm. because she, he, them represent all the male and female deity, mm -hmm. right? He has a representation of all of that, right? So right here, Yahuwah look at Satan as putting the likeness of a woman, mm -hmm. right? And so now this woman is full of the abomination of the earth. That means that all the wickedness that goes on in the earth, she's responsible for it. And Yahuwah's going to deal with her harshly. Like we just got the example of the false, the beast and the false prophet when we first started this lesson off, mm -hmm. right? But we're going we're gonna to find out what's going to happen to it. Did we finish that? Verse 6. Go ahead. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahushua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great astonishment. Okay, that's good. Let's go to uh, let's go to Genesis 11 right quick, right? So we want to let you understand that the beast and the false prophet, it is serious business and it needs to be understood that, hey, it is a hierarchy from the dragon to a world leader to a world religious leader and all the people, mm -hmm. right? So a beastly governmental system with religion in it. Mm -hmm. what's going on. And we see that today. We see it today. Mm -hmm. But we don't see it as the, the mark of the beast. We don't see it as a beastly system. We don't even think religion is bad. And it is the worst thing ever, brothers and sisters, because it's full of God worship, right? Mm -hmm. So Genesis 11 and verse 4. Let's pick that up right there right quick. Verse 4. Uh -huh. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But Yahuwah came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And Yahuwah said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do? After this, nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. So wait a minute. So this is, this is the time of Nimrod, right? Mm -hmm. And this tower, brothers and sisters, is a temple. It ain't no, it ain't no tower that they give us. In, in pictures and stuff, it's a temple, and they're going to make a name for themselves. What kind of name? The names of blasphemy, the names of God. Because Nimrod had tricked men into hating Yahuwah because he hated Yahuwah. He didn't want to worship Yahuwah. So he gathered men to make nations and cities like the beastly, uh, the beast is doing, controlling men, mm -hmm. right? And they're going to, with the false prophet, build a temple again in the last days and now they want to make a name for themselves again a beastly name a name of blasphemy right mm -hmm. go ahead verse 7 go ahead come now i will go down and there i will confuse their language uh -huh. that they may not understand one another's speech uh -huh. so yahuwah scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they ceased building the city so they ceased building the city and this temple basically right let's go a little further Let's go to Yashaya or old Isaiah, yeah, right quick. Let's go to Yashaya. Because let's let's pick up what happened to the, the beast and the false prophet. Okay. All right? We need to know what happened to those guys. And we don't want to leave you hanging. Because like I said, something happened to them because they're gonna be burning forever and ever. And again, I'm gonna help you understand what we're talking about right here, because this is super important. Yeshaya 66 and verse 15. Often you get there, go ahead. 15. Uh-huh. For behold, Yahuwah will come with fire and his and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So we know Yahuwah is not coming back, but Emmanuel Yah is coming back. Who is Emmanuel Yah? That is Yahusha. Why is Yahusha Emmanuel Yah? Because the phrase Emmanuel Yah means Yahuwah is with his people. How is Yahuwah going to be with his people? Through Yahusha. Mm -hmm. Right? Just like he's with us through, through us. Mm -hmm. By teaching his truth. Mm -hmm. Right? So, hey, Yahuwah, he ain't never got to leave his throne to do anything. Right? He just gives the authority. And he's given the authority to the Mashiach to return and put this stuff in order. Right? Mm -hmm. Continue. Verse 16. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will Yahuwah plead with all flesh. Uh -huh. And the slain of Yahuwah will and the slain of Yahuwah will be many. Uh -huh. They who sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, following after the priests in the midst of those who eat swine's flesh, that which is offered to God's Elohim's and the road, 
We'll be consumed together, says Jehovah. So the false prophet is telling you it's okay to eat the pig. Mm -hmm. He's telling you it's okay to eat the rodents. He's telling you it's okay to have one tree in the midst to, to fellowship with the beast and pollute yourself, corrupt yourself, right? But ain't nobody paying attention. Skip down, pick it up at verse 22. Uh -huh. Verse 22. Uh -huh. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make will remain before me, says Yahuwah, so will your seed and your name remain. Uh -huh. and, I, and it will come to pass that from one new moon to another. From what? From one new moon to another. From what? From one new moon to another. So are you keeping the moon cycle, paying attention to it to keep the feast day? What else you got to keep new? Go ahead. And from one Shabbat to another. Wait a minute, from what? From one Shabbat to another. So you got to keep the Shabbats, right? Go ahead. All flesh will come to worship before me, says Yahuwah. Uh -huh. And they will go forth and look upon the carcasses of the man, the, of the men who have transgressed against me. Boy, who carcass are we going to go up and look and see in this time? The beast and, and the, the false, false prophet, prophet, right? They're going to be like worms in the lake of fire. Continue. For their worm will not die, nor will their fire be quenched. And they will be in abhorrence to all flesh. Hey, when people go up and see this horrific event, the lake of fire here on earth, outside of Yerushalayim, and these two people, the beast and the false prophet, are in there burning, being tormented. Hey, that's just saying, while you're in the millennial kingdom, you better not slip. You have better not slip. When Yahusha comes and set up Dawood's throne and the great white throne uh, of the priesthood of Melchizedek, you have better not slip. Hmm. Because go look at the false prophet and the beast, the beast and the false prophet burning already in the lake of fire immediately after great tribulation, brothers and sisters. Let's, let's qualify that, right? Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah 14, we're going to wrap it up. Zechariah the 14th chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Let's pick it up. Zechariah 14. Let me get there because this is good. I, I don't want to miss this. Let me get here. All right. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> go ahead. Right. Verse 16. Uh huh. Then it will come to pass that everyone who survives of all the nations which came against Jerusalem will also go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahuwah of hosts, uh -huh. by keeping the feast at the house of Yahuwah. Hey, so if you ain't keeping the feast days in Leviticus 23, then if you are fortunate to barely make the buzzer shot, then you got to keep the feast in the Millennium King, mm -hmm. right? If you don't make the buzzer shot, then you're going to go into the into your grave, and you're going to wait till the millennial kingdom is over for the second resurrection, and then you're going to be judged into the lake of fire, brothers and sisters. And that way you'll be able to keep the false prophet and the beast company. Right? Hmm. But continue. Uh, Verse 17. Uh -huh. And it will be that if any families of the earth will not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, you who will host then upon them will be no rain. Uh -huh. If the family of Egypt will not come up and present themselves, they also will have no war. They will receive the same plague with which Yahuwah of hosts strikes the heathen who will not come up to keep the feast at the house of Yahuwah. Hey, Yahuwah is serious about being worshipped in truth and righteousness and holiness and in sincerity, brothers and sisters. He's serious about it. You better get yourself together. Go ahead. Verse 19. Uh -huh. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that do not go up to keep the feast at the house of Yahuwah. Uh -huh. In that day, there will even be engraved on the bells of the horses. Kodesh la Yahuwah, or holy to Yahuwah. Uh -huh. And the pots in Yahuwah's house will be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Yehuda will be holy to Yahuwah of hosts, so that all who sacrifice may come and take up them and boil the meat of the sacrifice in them. And in that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite or a God or a El worshiper in the house of Yahuwah of hosts. Let's go qualify that. One more thing. Let's go to Revelation 22, right? Revelation 22. Let's qualify that ain't no more God worshiper in the kingdom of Yahuwah when Yahusha comes back to set 21. To set up uh, Revelation 21, right? Let's let's see. Let's qualify it right quick. This is it right here. When you get there, you go ahead. Verse 22. Uh-huh. And I saw no pagan God worshiping, Elohim worshiping, sanctuary in it. In what? In the house of who? Go ahead. For the house of Yahuwah. The body of Mashiach was in it, uh -huh. and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of Yahuwah does enlighten it, and its lamp is the lamp. Uh -huh. And the nations of those who are saved will walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it will not be shut at all by day, for there will be no night there. Uh -huh. And they will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there will by no means enter into it anything that defiles, 
nor works abomination, neither alive but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hey, in the 13th chapter, those who are not written in the, the Lamb's book of life are going to be thrown into a lake of fire. And those who are saved in the end, not now, don't say you saved now because you still got work to do. But those who are saved at the end, who are written in the book of the Lamb's uh, book of life, will enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. And that is the beast and the false prophet. And I hope someone got someone standing in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah, Yahuwah.